This video was run on a Fox 3 Managed Solutions server. Alright, if you're new to DCS or any combat flight sim, you've probably heard the term situational awareness and I'm, that's what we're going to be going over today. Situational awareness is key to surviving any engagement in DCS, any mission, campaign, doesn't matter. Situational awareness is also the reason you're probably dying all the time. Uh, if, you're, if you're taking the time to start up on the ramp on a multiplayer server, take off and you're dead within 10 minutes, it's probably because you have a lack of situational awareness most of the time, especially if you're new. In World War II fighters, you just had your eyes and ears. You had to keep an eye out and look for the enemy, keep an eye on your wingmen, your flight lead, and listen to the radios. Hopefully they're calling the, these guys out. You're calling people out for your wingmen. In Cold War era aircraft, you've got the F-5. Not so much the F-14, it's got a lot more than that, but the F-5, all it has is the RWR, which we still have in modern day aircraft here. That's the radar warning receiver, and it's radar, and that's all the F-5 had, so you had to use the RWR and your radar to uh, find what you're looking for or find an enemy aircraft or find your wingmen, uh, things like that. In this video, I'm going to be going over the basics, the, the bare minimum basics of the F-16 sensor suite to give you the best situational awareness you can possibly get in the F-16. So if, if you're new to the F-16, this is how you keep your situational awareness as high as possible. Uh, so um, again, just the basics as is with all my videos. So uh, first is your RWR. You've got your radar warning receiver. That's this little uh, gauge right here, the sensor right here. And this shows you radars that are out there and their signal strength. This does not show distance from your aircraft. Um, so, for example, I've got an F-15 radar showing up out here, um, and I know it is at my 9 o'clock-ish. If we had a, another F-15 radar that showed closer to me, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is closer to me in the airspace. All it means is that the closer F-15 uh, radar uh, is a stronger signal strength. Um, so we've got an E-3 out here too. So all that means is strength. So uh, the further out, less uh, signal strength. Closer in to the center, the stronger the signal strength. So imagine your jet right here in the center and a 360 degree view around your jet uh, and uh, what those sensors are picking up. So I've got an E3 radar signature that's coming up out here, uh, coming up on my 11 o'clock and I can point my jet towards it, put it at my 12 o'clock, and you can see right away it's showing up on my radar now. What's right out in front of me at Angels 30, I've got something there. Uh, I'm also going to have a link in the description below uh, to a RWR symbol uh, listing so you can see what all the symbols are, what they mean, uh, so that when you're looking at this you'll know what those mean and uh, what those things are. Uh, for example, 29. If you see a 29, that's a MiG-29. It does not necessarily mean that it's a MiG-29. It's a MiG-29 radar. So uh, there are multiple aircraft that use the MiG-29's radar. I think it was the N019 is the uh, model of the radar. If I remember right, I might be wrong. Let me know in the comments below if I'm wrong on that. But uh, the N019 was used in the MiG-29 and I believe the Su-27. I might be wrong on that. And I want to say the Su-30 or 33, something like that. Um, they all use that same radar. So you might see a 29. doesn't mean that it's a MiG-29. It could be a, C a Su-27. So keep that in mind as well. Now, I've got a video on IFF. Uh, if you see a radar contact like this, this white, and it doesn't have, it's not green or red, and you're not sure if it's friendly or not, uh, TMS, Target Management Switch, left short to scan the entire radar view. So I know these are both friendly. Or TMS left long and let go. And now I can see line of sight. So I'm just looking at, you know, right here. So I know this is a friendly contact. You don't want to fire at that. First thing uh, I forgot to mention, if you're new, uh, display management switch down. If you see that it says not soy on the radar, push DMS down and get that white box over it. Now you can use RDR cursor switch to move the cursor around and TMS left short to IFF everything in the radar's view. So that's how you find things with the radar and the uh, RWR. So if you've got a contact on your or radar emitter showing up on your RWR, you can point your jet towards it, lock it up if it's uh, uh, an enemy. Like I said, closer to the center, stronger signal strength, not necessarily 
closer to you in uh, the airspace. It could be closer to you in the airspace, but it's not necessarily, it doesn't necessarily mean that. So uh, keep that in mind. A diamond over a contact on the RWR is the highest threat. So right now, if I were to turn on my Himix, so come down here, symbology, turn that all the way up. I can see on my Himix the highest threat. So you're only gonna see the highest threat, the diamond object is gonna be on your Himix, only one. And the diamond is the location of that contact, or that emitter, and this gap right here is what I'm looking at. So I'm looking to the left a little bit, keep looking back, this is what I'm looking at. So if I put the diamond in that gap, now I'm looking directly at, uh, in the direction of that contact. Now obviously we can see it with the contrail, but if there was no contrail, all it shows you is the direction. It could be up high, it could be down low, but I'm still looking at the diamond. I don't know where it is, right? So if I wanted to see a visual of that contact, so I can actually see where it is in the airspace, you know, high, low, where is it? I can look in the direction, but I'm not getting altitude. To get that, you go to your HSD. This is the horizontal situational display, and this thing is key to good situational awareness in the F-16. You'll never find me with this turned off. I'm always gonna have this up, unless I'm using a Maverick, in which case I've got the Maverick uh, weapon page here, the target uh, targeting pod over here. But other than that, I've always got the HSD up. So let's turn towards all these objects here. So on your HSD, let's display management switch down until we get a white box around it. So now we're using the HSD. Right here, you've got your jet in the center. That's you. And then you've got your radar cone, and this is your radar cone, this is what it's looking at. So if I go back over to the FCR and start, um, let's go down to a smaller, there we go. So I can move the radar around, this is what I'm looking at, this is what my radar can see. So I know that I, there's no way I'm going to be able to pick up that guy at, at Angels 12 over there until I move the radar over there, now I can, now I can see him with my radar, right? So that's what that is, um, let's bring it back out. If you DMS down and make the uh, HSD soy, you can use the RDR cursor switch to move this little crosshair around and select contacts that are being sent to you through the data link uh, by friendly aircraft that also have a data link or uh, by a, an AWACS. This is all, all these contacts are being given to me by the AWACS that's in the air. So I can RDR cursor switch over one of these. So I'm gonna just select this one right here. and. That's a selection, it is not a lock. So this is not a radar lock, this is just a, a data link uh, like selection. And I can look up, and there it is. That's the contact that I have selected here. If I TMS right, target management switch right, I can cycle through these. So again, RDR cursor switch over an object or a contact, TMS up to uh, select it, and then you can visually see that contact. And then TMS right to select something else. All right, there's, I got another one over here at 12. TMS right again. TMS right again, and I've got this one, oh, that's over here. There it is. So, and you've got the same dashed line on your bore sight on your HUD that you have on your Himix, just keep looking until that dashed line lines up and you'll see the hexagon. Now, keep in mind this hexagon is not a live track. So, you'll notice if you get closer, it'll it'll kind of um, float away from the uh, contact and then it'll get updated a few seconds later. Um, and that's just basically the ping interval of AWACS's radar and uh, other friendly radars and the time it takes for them to get the new location of that contact and then send it to your, your data link. So here's an example of a data link uh, selection that I've made and the hexagon isn't quite over the, uh, the F-15 here and it's kind of floating away until it gets re-updated. And the location of the F-15 is updated from AWACS every few seconds. So it's not gonna be exactly on it. So if you see a hexagon and there's no jet around it, just look around the hexagon. You're probably gonna find the thing that you selected fairly close or wait a few seconds and it'll update and go right next to it. Next, on the HSD, if you want to get a better view of what's behind you, so like right now I'm looking more in front of me than behind me, I can hit this button above DEP and center it 
and now I'm in the center and everything around me full 360 uh, degree view. I usually put this on uh, this mode when I'm running away from something. Otherwise, I've usually got it right here. In addition to all air contacts, you can also see SAM sites, any surface to air uh, sites. So we can expand this view by hitting up. Then I'll go to 120 miles, 60 miles, 30 miles, right? So 120 miles, I can see I've got an S uh, SA-11, SA-6, two SA-6s, two SA-11s, and I've got some red contacts here. Uh, again, this is all being sent to me via AWACS and friendly aircraft that have a data link. So we can select these, so I can uh, RDR cursor over that, TMS up. Now what's cool about this is I can't get a radar lock on this at all uh, from this distance, but I can get a, a data link selection on it um, because I've got an awesome AWACS with a huge powerful radar out there that's sending me the exact location so now I can literally see the target. I can see this guy, he's right there, Angels 25, right? Then I can cycle over to his buddy and there he is over there. So now I know where everyone is. I've got uh, I've got a uh, red arrow there. I've got a an F-15 to my right, friendly F-15. I've got another red arrow there. Cycle through. This is the I believe that's the AWACS. So this is a good way to get that situational awareness. I can see where I am in relation to enemy and friendlies. These uh, SAs have threat rings. So those of you who are new, uh, the circles are the threat rings. If you go within that circle, it's basically where the, that missile can travel and hit you within that ring. If you're outside that ring, it can still hit you uh, and, and get you, but um, you have a better chance at surviving uh, that missile shot if you're outside the threat ring. But the closer to the center of that ring you get, the more lethal those missiles are. This is not the radar range of that uh, SAM site. This is the missile effective range, uh, pretty much. All right, so now I can see that I've got radar coming up. So I'm gonna cycle through these and get to that guy and I can see him. He is right there. Let's pull on in here, come down here, DMS down, select that target. I've got them locked up. I'm gonna go, go to air to air mode and flip my HSD back on. And while I'm firing at this guy, I'm keeping my SA and I can select him while I'm locked on and that missile has gone pitbull. So I've got that radar contact right there, good hit. And then I can follow my Hemix over and see the other guy. So we can come back around, got the hexagon. Hexagon means it's a data link uh, selection. I like to use the term selection because it's not a lock and I don't want to confuse anyone. RDR cursor up to him, create a lock and that changes it to a square. So you can differentiate between a data link uh, selection and a radar lock. Uh, selection on a data link is just a hexagon. Radar lock is a square. And we're within range, we can fire. We can probably escape that if he really tries. Defensive here. I'm gonna lose lock. But it's okay because I can just come over here and select him this way. And I'm not seeing smoke, so I think he, uh, oh, wait. Yeah, no, I don't see smoke. So I lost radar lock, but I can still see him with the data link. So we'll come back over here. There we go. Oh, he's turning hot on me again. And it's, pit, it's Pitbull, so he's probably defensive again, and that's a hit. So I hope this helps some of you new guys that are new to the F-16. Uh, I hope this helps you guys uh, gain better situational awareness so you know where you are in relation to your wingman. You can find your wingman. Uh, I've seen that a lot where guys are trying to find each other on the servers, 
We're on a campaign, they get lost, uh, and um, hopefully this will help. You guys can cycle through and, and use your HSD, use your sensors, use your RWR, use your radar, use the HSD. The HSD is the most powerful situational awareness uh, tool at your disposal. Uh, so always have that up, and you can cycle through them, find your wingman, and uh, yeah, be a lot more lethal. All right, see you guys in the next one.